Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mike here. So, I had the opportunity to interview an engineer who works for Orbital Sciences. I found out recently that there are two different Orbital Sciences facilities that are real close by to where I live. And I was able to meet uh, th this guy who works there. His name is Michael Mikowski through the National Space Society, which I recently joined. And he's a member through them, and I, uh, I was able to, to sit down and, and interview him with my camera and, you know, other things that record sound. But uh, we were able to sit down, and uh, I'm about to show you the full interview with uh, Mike Mikowski. And he's, he's a really great guy. We really hit it off. And he, he does all sorts of things. I'm not going to steal his thunder. He's going to tell you all about all this different stuff. But it, it was really cool to go uh, and, and visit him and see all, of, all the really cool things that he has. So here's that full interview with him. And I hope you enjoy it. As much as I did. Or didn't. Or did. Stop recording! Ah! Hi, my name is Michael Mikowski. I'm an engineer currently working in Orbital Sciences in Gilbert, Arizona. I've had a long and fortunate career in, in aviation and aerospace. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Arizona back in 1977 with a degree in electrical engineering. And I got a master's degree at Washington University it's in 83 in St. Louis. Uh, I started out at McDonnell Douglas back in the late 70s and worked on a number of uh, unmanned space programs and shuttle programs and some other things there in St. Louis. Uh, when McDonnell Douglas St. Louis was winding down their space activities, I transferred out to an office they had uh, near Washington, D.C., near NASA Goddard. And we did some work for Goddard there in the mid-90s. Uh, then there was an opportunity, I had family in Arizona, and we had an opportunity to uh, do some work for Motorola on the Iridium satellite program here in Phoenix. And so I took a transfer out to Phoenix in the late 90s, still with McDonnell Douglas, which then became part of Boeing, and uh, worked on Iridium for a few years. And when that program ran down, uh, a lot of the people from there went over to a company called Spectrum Astro, based in Gilbert, Arizona. And I've been with that organization ever since. Now, of course, it's been under a couple of different uh, ownerships since then. Uh, Spectrum was sold to General Dynamics in the uh, early uh, 2000s. And uh, in 2010, uh, the organization was purchased by Orbital. So now we're part of Orbital's uh, outfit, and uh, we make satellites and rockets. They do some work on that, on rockets and Chandler. And the main office for Orbital is in Virginia. So my specialty area is satellite power systems, batteries, solar arrays, and all the stuff that goes in between them. And I've been doing that for quite a few number of years right now. So that's my professional side of things, but having been fortunate enough to work in the space industry, I've always been kind of a space groupie. And ever since I grew up back in the 60s watching Mercury and Gemini and Apollo and all that, I knew I had to have that as a career. And I was fortunate to you know, get that degree in engineering to uh, work in the industry, but I'm also very much interested in it uh, personally, and in the early 80s when times were pretty dark for a space program, shuttle was just getting off the ground, but there was a lot of uh, budget cutting in terms of science and exploration. Um, I felt I had to get a little more involved, and there are a number of organizations and groups of movement at the time, the L5 Society, National Space Institute, uh, Space Week activities. So at this time I was in St. Louis and I got very involved in that and spent most of the 80s and early 90s involved with uh, a group called St. Louis Space Frontier, which was uh, affiliated with the L5 Society and the National Space Society later. And we did a lot of public outreach and activities and working with schools and local media and other organizations just went out promoting space. Get me very busy, but then uh, moved to uh, the outfit in Maryland where it did work for Goddard. And having a uh, NASA headquarters there and a big Goddard Center, uh, didn't see the need to get as much involved in the outreach because they were already doing that there. Uh, I've been doing a little less of that in the last decade or so, partly because of the way the space movement has evolved, part of the family obligations, part of the kind of got a little burned out on it, and the environment's different that way in terms of places where I've lived. 
So I've been a little less busy on that. And then when I got out to Arizona, mostly did my outreach activities affiliated with the, an engineering society, the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. It's a professional society for folks in the industry. And, and that group does a lot of stuff with schools, um, some, some public outreach, some public policy things, talking to government officials and things like that. But a lot of, uh, a lot of it's been working with teachers and helping them. But now what's come up, being the uh, 50th anniversary of manned space flight, I got inspired to uh, really do something a little, little more intensive here this year, this spring, with the uh, Yuri's Night celebration with the various space groups in Phoenix. Phoenix has had uh, folks attempt to have various organizations, again, like National Space Society and Planetary Society, uh, have some organizations going here. And they've done some things on and off, but it hasn't been uh, anything real steady, at least when I compare it to my days of what we were able to do in St. Louis. Uh, again, the environment's different. We've got a space station built. The Russians, you know, aren't our enemies as they were back in the, the hot days of the Cold War in the 80s. Uh, so those times have changed, so, so that whole picture is different. But there's still a lot of misunderstanding about what the space program is about. Uh, there's certainly a lot of uncertainty in the future of manned space. So I thought this was a good opportunity to really um, try to get out there again and put some kind of event together. So that's what we're doing for the upcoming Yuri's Night activities here in April here in Phoenix. So I've been getting involved in helping with that. Now also, uh, my interest, again, my, I have hobby interests in space. Uh, I've been always involved a little bit in amateur astronomy, not real seriously. But my main thing is, is uh, I've always felt that I was a creative person. And I've dabbled in art. I was, uh, when I was in grade school, I did sketches and things that my teacher said, Wow, you're such a good artist. You know? Look at this. It's really cool. Does that do stills? Yeah, but my real enjoyment is building scale models. And you can see there's a display case of uh, model aircraft behind me. Let's take a closer look. All right, you want to do that? We have lots of different airplanes here, but the most exciting part to me, anyway, is on this other side here. You can see uh, here we have the Space Shuttle uh, Enterprise, and then the uh, fake uh, Space Trek Shuttle Enterprise, I mean Space Enterprise, yes. <laughs> Star Trek Star. And there's the more Shuttle right here. We've got Space Walkers. Here we have There's the that space station, space station I was telling you about earlier. A little model of that. Down here we have collections of different uh, model rockets. We have Atlas, um, <coughs> Mercury, Saturn, and here we have uh, space shuttle stacks. And what I like is he has the uh, regular stack here, and then behind it is Shuttle C. And then here we have Skylab. There's a Soyuz. I've been very fortunate that I've been able to uh, also have, uh, say, combine my hobby and professional interest with space stuff. But my, my main hobby interest since I was a kid was building models. And um, of course, like in space things, I build space models. And back in my days at McDonnell Douglas, they had this nice library and, of all sorts of NASA documents and things. And they had, you know, at the time, just in the last decade or two prior, built Mercury and Gemini and Skylab. So they had files full of stuff. And as programs went on, they'd be thinning their files. And so I did a lot of dumpster diving and getting a lot of neat documents that people were getting rid of or I could copy out of the library. So I had all these resources available on historical spacecraft, and that helped me build my models. And I like to write, like I said, I'm a creative kind of person, so that's why I'm an engineer, and that's why I build models, it gets my creative outlet going. But I like to write, too. So I would uh, start writing about building space models, and I figured uh, it was my hobbyist duty to share what I found with other enthusiasts. So I started writing articles, and I developed this little line of uh, self-published magazines I call Space and Miniature. And uh, what I 
do is I've got uh, special topic little booklets on the shuttle program, let's say your Mercury, Gemini, Apollo. And so for hobbyists or model builders or even historians who want to know the background of how the hardware developed over different missions to build an accurate model of one of those space vehicles or to illustrate one in a piece of artwork, let's say. Um, I've got these space and miniature books available for sale and uh, I publish those and every few years I put out a new one on some topic and that keeps me busy and it's just another outlet. And then, you know, I go along and I, you know, will build models of different spacecraft, sometimes historical ones, maybe some future ones. I even do some stuff at my office for some of the projects we work on. And that's always been a lot of fun. But I've got a website, uh, spaceandminiature.com, where you can find out information. I post some reference material there, and there's more information on the books there. You can take a look at that if you're interested. Great. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for joining me. It's been a lot of fun. All right, I hope to hear more from you in the future. Oh, I'm sure we will. All right, thank you. I had a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed being able to sit down with Mike and hear about his experiences in the industry and check out his cool models that he has. And Mike has been really busy uh, putting together uh, some events uh, for Yuri's night. And uh, I have another video where I talk about all the cool things right here that you can watch. Go ahead and click that. Yeah, right here. Um, in that video we talk about uh, uh, all the people that are going to be there and, and more about that event. So you can get all the information there. And thank you for coming in and joining me. Remember to rate, subscribe, comment. And uh, if you like uh, this sort of interview thing, uh, I have another guy that uh, I'm going to be interviewing real soon. And hopefully uh, with the different things that I'm going to be doing in the future, it will lead to more interviews as well. So, see you next time.